So my name is Alex Meyer. I'm a lab leader here at uh, RSB, the Research School of Biology at uh, Australian National University in Canberra. My passion for parasites and malaria infection is a parasitic disease started at university. I had lecturers who uh, planted the spark of, of enthusiasm for, for parasites in me. And I found this concept of that one organism lives inside of another organism very intriguing. And we always see parasites as something odd, something which is not very common. However, if you look at the tree of life, half of the organism actually have chosen to take this, this lifestyle and they are parasites. And of course, lots of those parasites are causing disease and causing disease in human and mal malaria infection is uh, without doubt the, the biggest parasitic disease of humankind. So the malaria life cycle starts as probably everyone knows with the mosquito bite. So the malaria parasite is injected into the human host and there the parasite travels to the liver. The liver cells are infected and within the uh, liver then there's a multipli multiplication round. So one parasite develops in a thousand other parasites within the liver. That takes approximately two, hour, uh, two weeks. And after those two weeks, those stages, which we call merozoites, so they are free living little parasites, are released into the bloodstream. And then within a matter of minutes, those little uh, parasites find a new home. And the new home are red blood cells. Within the red blood cells, they, the parasite has to establish itself. It, it renovates its new home. And it, uh, on a molecular basis, it, it completely restructures the red blood cell. And then after, depending on what kind of malaria you contract, after uh, two days or three days, the malaria parasite has undergone another round of multiplication. So from one parasite, it gets up to, to uh, 32 new parasites. The red blood cell has done it deed, its deed. Uh, the parasite ruptures the red blood cells, and then the free living parasites are finding new red blood cells again. So that's, that's the cycle, and that's, that's also the cycle, the part of the cycle that causes disease. However, in order to go back into the mosquito, some of those uh, parasites have to develop into another stage we call the gametocyte. And only those gametocyte stages can can be taken up by the mosquito and can develop in the mosquito. Now, if a mosquito feeds on a human, and by the way, only female mosquitoes uh, feed on, on humans, and taking up those, mosquito, uh, those gametocytes, it, the mosquito is not just a syringe which transmits the parasite from one human body to the other there's actually a very complicated amplification step in life cycle within the mosquito too. So if, if you look at it from a biological point of view, it is extremely complicated and, and a lot of uh, components have, co have to come to, together in order to ensure this transmission between a human host and the mosquito and back into the human host has to take uh, place. Not all mosquitoes are able to transmit mosquito, uh, uh, malaria and also there has to be a certain temperature where within the lifespan of, of a mosquito the, the parasite can develop in order that it is transmitted again. So it's quite complicated. Well, malaria is a huge problem in developing countries. It is a problem on several levels. There's the level of the economic impact. So it is estimated that in countries where malaria disease is, where malaria is uh, endemic, that those economies uh, lose up to 12 billion dollars in per year in terms of economic output. But of course, it, it with every disease, it's also disease 
of the patient. So you have to see the individual. And if in those countries, those individuals are living very often on the line of poverty, they have to go to work every day. They don't have the uh, benefits of a social uh, network. So it's, it's quite easy. If you're, if you're sick, you can't go to work. You don't have any income. There's no uh, meal on the table. And you can see there's very, very fast uh, downward spiral going on. M malaria affects a lot of countries worldwide. It is estimated that a anywhere between 800,000 and 1 million people uh, die of that disease every year. But there's also between 300 uh, and 500,000 cases of malaria each year. So in, to put it in, in context, it is estimated that 10 times more people die of cancer or uh, a third uh, of, of those people in terms of number die of HIV. So it is definitely one of the three biggest uh, infectious diseases uh, worldwide. The sad part of it is that most people who die of, of uh, malaria are children under the age of five. Uh, research in general is very much a team exercise and I think it's as easy as this that the team is just great at, at the research school of biology. The expertise is widespread so we investigate from identifying drug targets and understanding the biology of the parasite to developing new drugs but then also looking at developed drug resistance. And the drug resistance then can potentially be even reverted by adding new, new components to the, to the system. So the, as I said, the expertise is quite um, strong, dispersed, but is, we have world-class facilities, but basically it comes down to the team and and it's a very collegial uh, exercise and everyone in the team is so dedicated to finding a cure to malaria and unraveling the doings. So our lab tries to understand the biology of the malaria parasite with the view of developing new drug targets or intervention strategies. It doesn't have to be a drug, it could be a vaccine or it could be a way how we actually deal with the disease. So understanding the biology is quite important. Now, normally, if you have an organism with the advent of genomic research, we very much know about the gene composition of organisms. So there's a library of all those genes. In the case of the malaria parasite, half of those genes are actually unknowns. They don't have any particular feature we could cl classify them by. They are just black boxes. And, and the task of our group is to shed light on some of those black boxes and hopefully identify those black boxes which we then can take further into uh, the development of drugs. So how does that work? We, by bioinformatic means, we uh, search the database, uh, the library of those genes for potential candidates and then we are trying to remove those individual candidates out of the malaria parasite, which is called a gene knockout, because we knock out this particular gene. If we have, and we actually replace the gene with a drug-resistant gene so that we can separate the modified parasite from a normal parasite. And then we compare the, the normal wild type parasite to a modified parasite and whatever difference in behavior or sensitivity to drugs or wh whatever assay we, we look at, this can have, is then in the end uh, attributed to the function of this particular gene. People on the ground are absolutely crucial in the fight against malaria. Drugs, for example, take 
a certain uh, time in order to work and even in, in our surroundings we are faced with that if we're going to a doctor and we get an antibiotic. We probably all had this experience that we are told that we have to take the antibiotic for a week and then after two days we are uh, happy again and, and healthy and we just can't see the reason why we would take the antibiotic for the re remainder of the course. This is actually to prevent drug resistance. And what, what happens is that in your system you still have parasites floating around which don't cause disease at that level but since they are exposed then to, to fewer and fewer uh, amounts of the drug they then can develop drug resistance and that, that's what very much often happens in, in malaria that we have a drug and then by misuse of those drugs uh, resistant develops. Now you can point the fingers to, to a patient but you can that's also where the economics comes in again. If you have to weigh up whether you can take that drug and pay for it or whether you can actually keep those pills for your next bout of malaria uh, you can understand why people are not taking the full uh, brunt. There's also uh, problems with counterfeit drugs so people are trying to make money and either they uh, market drugs which are not effective or which have a diluted concentration of the active ingredients. Malaria infection is preventable so there are many more uh, ways of interfering with the drug uh, with, with the action of the disease. Drug Taking drugs is one thing, but it's also prevention. So if you sleep under a bed, bed net to prevent the uh, bite of a mosquito or use insect repellent, that also helps. So it's a very much an integrated approach to fighting the disease. Parasitology is a branch of ecology. It, as much as it is a disease, it is a living system and the environment very much takes, takes uh, a huge part in, in the problem that represents uh, malaria. So if you provide breeding grounds for mosquitoes in endemic countries, you eventually will have uh, a, mosqui a malaria mosquito problem and then a malaria problem. If you prevent those uh, mosquitoes from breeding, you very much are on, on top of, of, of your problem. Now we always see malaria as a tropical disease because as I outlined before you need a certain temperature for the mosquito to develop. You have to have certain uh, species of, of mosquitoes and of course you have, a, have to have a certain density of malaria patients so that a mosquito can uh, shuttle the parasite from one uh, patient to an uninfected human. But if you look down in the his history books, malaria used to be a huge problem in Europe. So up to the, the middle of the 19, 1900s, Italy was renowned for uh, having malaria. And even London had uh, a huge malaria problem so in, in summer lots of people uh, started getting, getting malaria. Uh, Germany had a huge problem, countries like Sweden had problems. And a lot of those, uh, wh why was it defeated in those countries? First of all it's a good health system there but there were also environmental impacts so stagnated uh, rivers were made, uh, they, they were modified so that they could be used for, for shipping. So the breeding grounds of mosquitoes were uh, diminished and therefore the mosquito population diminished too. There was less malaria in those uh, countries. Also how people lived, the, the stables for, 
for um, for the cows and horses were eventually more separated from the housing and the, those stables provided uh, places for the mosquitoes to seek shelter.